Cody Burns, thanks for being here today. Well, Shane, thank you for having me. I'm super honored and grateful to connect. Yeah, me as well. Now, Cody, you have a, a fascinating story of inspiration, and uh, there's no better person to tell it than you. So how about we start off with why you're here? You know, what exactly are you here to talk about today? Yes, absolutely. Well, my mission, it's really to help people live free from the bonds of scars. And everything that I do, it stems from helping uh, provide steps and things in which people can apply to their lives, but also at the same time, uh, you know, bring hope and let people know that life is beautiful, life is worth living. And a lot of this stemmed uh, the vision, anyhow, of wanting to give hope came about actually whenever I was really young. And I grew up in the faith-based world. And I remember, you know, kind of feeling that calling, if you will, at a young age and knew that I was going to have the opportunity at some point in my life to impact thousands. And although I didn't quite know exactly how that would happen, I had an idea. And uh, a lot of this kind of also too came about from me going to a kid's camp. And at this kid's camp, they had a camp speaker at night and he would come out on the stage and he would uh, do some interesting things along with his message. And one of which was juggling. And uh, as okay. a little boy, I fell in love with this interesting talent. And uh, I started just dabbling in, in practicing every chance I could until I taught myself. But what really stood out to me the most about this speaker is that he was up on the platform, not really to get self-glorification. He was up there really to give us kids a message of hope, something of value that we could take home and apply to our lives. And mm -hmm. I seen how all my peers were being impacted and as my, me too as well. And um, it just kind of was at that moment, I was like, I knew this is what I'm called to do. This is why I was born. Hmm. And so all through my young years, I pursued that. And then, um, my gosh, pursuing the juggling and speaking every chance I could, fairs, festivals, conferences, camps. And up to the point I was 23 years old, I had started doing some international stuff, did some mission work in the country of Cuba. And um, life was just going great for me. But then suddenly in May of 2013, everything would come to a complete stop, a complete stop. And, and Shane, I, I know that there's a lot of people that you may be listening to this or people that you know in your life. I know certainly in mine that we've all encountered those moments and times where everything that we're doing in our life suddenly just ceases mm -hmm. and all of our plans, our goals, and suddenly we're, we're left with this disaster, if you will, and for me, it was being uh, stopped at a red light, a literal red light on a highway. And I was rear-ended by a refrigerator box truck. Hmm. And the box truck, when it hit my Dodge Durango, my Dodge blew up into flames. And when the first responders came to the scene, they said I was dead. They said there's no way anybody could survive this and for those that are listening or watching this if they are interested they can google my name cody burns and they can actually see some photos like there's images out there and to kind of help give that perspective as what i'm sharing yeah and um which you can understand as to why they would say i was dead but somehow or another they saw my hand move and that little bit of movement changed everything for me hmm. and i i love taking the parallel and combining that to life like i was saying we all encounter moments stop lights in our lives if you will maybe that's a sudden death maybe that's a, a sudden diagnosis from the doctor that we weren't expecting maybe that's divorce abuse i mean list goes on yeah moments and times where everything stops and we find ourselves trapped in difficult circumstances and oftentimes we we don't know what to do next and I always encourage people to say, make a little bit of movement. And for me, it went, uh, like I said, went a really long way. Um, and, you know, people, you know, you don't have to stay stuck. There is hope. 
And so I, Shane, have, uh, I can rattle on with this story, but I also yeah. want to give you some pause. I want to pause here and let you tune <laughs> sure. in. And so feel free. Sure. So what I, I really liked about the beginning part of your story was how you not only continued with the inspirational uh, speaking and that kind of stuff, but you also stuck with the juggling. Um, <laughs> you were like, I like everything that this guy does. Um, I'm going to do all of that. And uh, that's great. What, what's really fascinating to me is how, and we'll get back to your story in a moment, because I know that you know, you suffered third and fourth degree burns, which I didn't even know were a thing uh, over, I think it was like, what, 40% of Correct. your body or something like that. And uh, which is unbelievably extensive damage. And uh, I mean, you know, look at you now um, and, and how you've, you know, really taken the story and used it to change so many people's lives just in the face of adversity, right? And uh, you know, in your book, which I want to get the title correctly, just so people know, it's a really wonderful book. It's called Scar Release, Breaking Free of Yesterday's Troubles. Now, that's important because the analogy that you stick with uh, throughout is that, you know, we all have these scars, both internal and external scars, and the scar being, you know, um, healed, wounded tissue of some sort right now it could be psychological tissue perhaps um or physical tissue as in uh this case here but it's the ability to transcend these great moments of suffering and tragedy in order to not let them control our lives or to uh ruin things for us but instead use them as opportunities for growth and for change which is one of the hardest but most incredible things that a person can do no doubt, no doubt. And it, it's, it's really a matter of us uh, just sitting down and working on ourselves. And, and oftentimes we as humans, and, and I, I know I, I've had my moments where we want to distract ourselves from really getting to the work, the hard stuff. And if you're going to find freedom from, from a particular area or scar that is keeping you bound uh, throughout your life, you really have to just sit down and evaluate. And oftentimes, if we really just sit and wonder why we are bothered with a mm -hmm. particular problem or a particular person, et cetera, in our life, it can go back many, many years. And for many adults, it stems from their childhood. And, and so it's really just getting to the core of why is this a problem for me? How can I break free of that so that I can utilize my story to benefit the life, not only of myself, but my family, coworkers, the world around me? Yeah. Could you give me one second? My dog wants to get out the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Come. Where do you want to go? Let's go. Go see. He's such a crazy dog because there's nothing happening outside and he'll come straight back inside. But he's <laughs> like banging on the door. He's like, let me out. Now, um, so sorry about that. But so, you know, what's really fascinating is that everyone goes through tragedy and hell in life, right? And it looks different for different people. And whether it's, as you say, the loss of someone or an illness or a tragedy or you know, it's political unrest or it's violent crime or it's something like that. No one is safe and immune from life's hazards. And uh, unfortunately, that's the case, but maybe also fortunately, because it does seem to be the case that the most growth happens through the worst adversity, mm. right? And even though it doesn't necessarily feel like that at the time, especially during that period, right, where you maybe you've lost all, most of your hope and you're feeling so desperate and helpless and you don't know what to do or where to go. Um, you know, when someone says to you, like, this will be good for you in the long run, you're like, you know, get out. Like, that's not, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not fair to say, nor should you say that to people at that time. It's, it's not the, the right, necessarily the right uh, reassuring phrase, but, um, you know, to see someone like yourself who has taken this complete tragedy and transformed the way that it 
what it means to you, right? It's all about the meaning that we make from these things. And of course it took you years to, to deal with it, right? It wasn't like you, you woke up out of your, you know, medically induced coma and you were like, thank God, you know, this is going to be great for me. Um, you know, imagine how strong I'm going to become because of this event. Like, no, not at all. Like it took you, took you a long time. And perhaps you're even still dealing with some of that today uh, to really come to grips with what this, this means for you. Right. And, and so how do you, how do you view it now? This, this accident that's happened to you, what does it mean to you in your life now, you know, 10 years later? Well, it's, it's certainly been a launching pad that has allowed me to reach more people. Mm. And I, I always love sharing this powerful quote that was given to me by one of my mentors. And the quote is the key to success is playing the hand you were dealt like it was the hand that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And throughout this situation in my life, certainly it was very traumatic. Um, I almost died a couple times in the burn unit. Um, I was in a coma on full life support for three weeks. Um, hmm. I had to relearn to walk, use my hands. I mean, we're talking months and even years of outpatient occupational and physical therapy, trying to regain my life back many, many surgeries. Um, but I, I had to really do a lot of work on myself, but I knew what I was born, why I was born. Mm. And I always share the story of whenever I was in in-state rehab, where I was relearning to walk and use my hands. And uh, for the longest time, I couldn't even bathe myself or, or do anything. I mean, all, all of my independence was shattered. Yeah. yeah. And so I was, I was really in need of others helping me, but I had gotten this um, garbage bag full of get well cards from a bunch of children that I had spoken to in Oklahoma city. Now, uh, this happened prior to the wreck, obviously, but I had been out there a couple years in a row and uh, spoken to thousands of kids um, throughout that state. And they had all had these get well cards. People were following the story. Social media picked it up, the news. So people were constantly checking in on my progress. And I had seen um, all these cards, you know, get well. We're praying for you, showing pictures of me juggling and and I'm thinking, you know, what message am I going to teach in this moment? Mm -hmm. Because when life is going great, we can all talk a good talk. But when tragedy strikes and rubber hits the road, our faith, our message, our mission, everything that we are about is suddenly put to the test. And for these little eyes that were watching me, I now have to live up to the words that I've been saying all along. Yeah. And so I had to go back to why, why am I born? Why am I here on this earth to begin with? And so when I reevaluated myself in my life and I went back to my mission, it was just, it was a no brainer. I'm going to utilize this experience all the more to help me reach the masses. And so I, I speak more so today to, I would say, uh, teenagers, college students, corporate America. And I've also gotten to do some things inside prisons. Mm. And, and so my audience is certainly a lot broader than what it once was. And I've been, been able to write the book and been, uh, did national uh, news and media sharing the story. And it's just been remarkable to see mm. how this experience has just all the more helped me accomplish my mission. And what, you know, one of the elements that I really liked about the book and your story is how you've, you know, how your faith really underpins so much of this, uh, so much of your life uh, in general, but particularly of the story and how you've managed to transform it into something positive and uplifting and inspirational, right? And because I think that, as you say, like in those moments, that's when your faith is tested, right? When you're like, why is God doing this to me? You know, I haven't done anything wrong. I've set my life's mission to do good and help people. Um, I didn't do anything wrong. I was stationary at a red light. Like I wasn't breaking the rules. Like 
you know, I didn't deserve any of this. Right. And I think that's where people's faith gets tested. Absolutely. To the maximum. Right. And then it comes time. Like, are you going to walk the walk? Mm -hmm. Can you do what you've been preaching and believing in terms of during your darkest hours? Can you hold that faith and that hope that this is what's supposed to be happening? Uh, and you know, it's a battle, right? It's not a, a simple decision necessarily. And in your case, you know, you had all these letters from these kids and uh, the support from a community to be like, well, we're looking up to you to do this, right? So there's that added pressure of it's not just about you and yourself and God. It's about um, everyone is looking at you and saying, well, now you're really going to show us if you believe what you say, right? Um, and now that you have, which to be fair, took a hell of a lot, right? It wasn't an easy battle. Uh, and I don't even know half the story. I'm I just from what you've spoken about and, and written about, but I mean, internally, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you the first few years, right? Of just really wrestling with this. And I mean, your whole world changed, right? In an instant, everything was different. Uh, you were different. You look different. What you could do is different. What your plans were were different. It just your whole world crumbled around you, right? Yeah. And then to take that and really say, okay, eventually take that and say, okay, well, I'm going to use this for good. And now you're on the other side and you're walking the walk, so to speak, right? You're saying, I went through hell and I came out the other side because I had faith. And because I didn't lose hope, at least permanently, maybe there were some moments, uh, but it's tough to do that, man. And, and then now, and I don't like to use this word credibility because it, it's not about like whether you're credible or not, but it's different when you're talking to someone who's lived through it mm -hmm. than someone who's just talking about it. Right. And so I think you're in a so much more of a powerful position to influence and help people now because you've gone through this, that it's fascinating how this is just how it ended up this way for you. Yeah. And, and, and really, and, and that's one of those things where it was a choice that I had to make. And I believe yeah. we all, you know, we have those choices and um, do we allow these tragedies, these stoplights, these hard moments in our lives to define us or refine us? Yeah. And for me, it was making that choice on a daily basis. And, and my faith, as you were sharing, it did play a, a big role in my recovery. Um, you know, however, even uh, aside from that, it's just making those proactive steps to say, all right, I'm going to get back up. Uh, I'm, I'm here not living for myself. When we think about ourselves all day long, that is a number one ticket to depression, to a pity party. But it's when you begin to look outside of yourself and recognize that you're not alone in your circumstance, that's when the, the light turns on, so to speak. And it's like, all right, um, you know, what legacy do I want to leave with my life? Because life is short. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was 23 when all this went down and, you know, healthy one minute, the next you wake up, you're completely mangled and disformed. Um, and, and so it was tough, but it's been quite remarkable to see the other side of things. And it's allowed me to grow and learn in ways that I wouldn't have mm -hmm. if I hadn't gone through this. And so it has also, like you were saying, with the credibility part, it, it has. I mean, I'm able to go into venues where people have, and we all have, everybody has stories, and every story is different, and I don't fully understand everybody's story. The only story I'm a master of is my own. Mm -hmm. I lived it, but everyone has their own story. But it also provides this sense of somewhat understanding, empathy towards you know, yourself and, and even for me to others where we can kind of relate on things. I mean, my, my wife, prime example, I mean, she, she is a cancer survivor and as a little girl, she had a very rare type of cancer. And when uh, we started dating, that was a big thing for her and she has scars and 
she deals with a lot of things in, in, internally. But as a result of what I went through and what she's went through, we were able to connect mm-hmm. and pull off of each other's stories. And it's really quite powerful because you can learn so much from each other. I think that empathy thing is essential, right? And it's empathy empathy through suffering yeah. is what unites us in that suffering is something we all face, right? Maybe there's a few Buddhist monks who are like, no. <laughs> but uh, for most of us, suffering is a part of life. And uh, if you can open your heart to be compassionate when there is suffering, then you can learn so much from people, right? We have this amazing relationship with each other where we can learn from each other's stories and ideas and pain and uh, lived experience without having to necessarily go through it ourselves, which is, you know, I guess in, in many sense, thank God for that, right? Because you're out here teaching and, you know, showing people all of these like amazing and inspirational ways of living and being and doing in the world without saying to people, well, you have to go and suffer greatly just like I did in order to benefit from this wisdom, right? It's more of I suffered, I gained some wisdom from it. Let me share it with you so that you don't have to go through the same suffering or you can use it to deal with your suffering, right? And then when people do that for each other in a much broader communal sense, then it's, I mean, it's massive. Right. And we're social creatures and we're so dependent on each other for just about everything. And, you know, there's no, there's no healing in isolation or very rarely is there true healing in isolation. Maybe individual pieces can be healed in isolation through, you know, deep reflective meditation and things like that and, and journaling and fair enough. Right. But by and large, you don't live a life like that. You live a life with other people in relation to other people. And they're there for you and you're there for them. And that's an essential part to any healing journey, at least as far as I can, as far as I can tell. Oh, no doubt. Um, absolutely. And, and, and some of the things that I will commonly share with others is, I, you know, I love acronyms. And yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I go into different groups of people that are struggling and going through challenges or depression. And I say, well, no matter what life brings you, uh, if you're at a, if you're at a moment in your life where you're encountering some challenges, let me give you some CPR. And so CPR, the, the acronym, the C is community. That's the first one. I mean, it, it, community is, is vitally important for everyone. Uh, I believe we are a byproduct of those individuals we surround ourselves with. Mm-hmm. And, and so if you want good results to come about in your life, then find those individuals that are doing those things uh, because it's going to rub off on you. And, and so, you know, for me, it was super important that I found good individuals that were going to encourage me, uplift me during my moment of depression, those moments where I, I found myself, you know, hopeless. Uh, they pulled me out of the rut. And, and even from a business standpoint, the, the same holds true. It's like, well, you know, all right, I want to speak. I want to write a book. So I found other speakers and mentors and those individuals that were doing those things. So I learn and I grow. So community, um, mm-hmm. and if, if for those interested, the other parts of the acronym is patience. Um, it, it takes time. If you want results, if you want to get from point A to point B, be patient. You know, my recovery, it took time. And, you know, a big thing for me, too, that I'm commonly asked is, you know, how is your relationship with the driver that hits you? Mm. And that that's everywhere I go. Everyone is asking me those things because obviously my injuries were not caused because of my poor choice, but because of the poor choice of somebody else. And there's a lot of people that find themselves in those particular situations. People are scarred and hurt and damaged because of what somebody else did to them. And so uh, as a result, I had to forgive the one who hurt me and forgiveness takes time. It it Mm -hmm. took patience and it wasn't overnight, but I understood that forgiveness is more so for myself, not so much the other person, but I wanted to find that freedom and move forward. And, And so, but also at the same time, you know, practice compassion on the one who hurt me 
And, you know, I don't know this individual, mm-hmm. um, but you know, Hey, he, he has, he has his story. And, and so I have to be as empathetic as I can be and understand that life goes on. And, and so patience and then renew your mind, uh, good books, good podcasts, continually just soak up good materials and, and, and even music, the things we listen to. I mean, the, the lyrics uh, in some of the songs that we're hearing. Uh, my father is a big fan of country music. And, you know, and I like some country music songs. I won't lie. But you listen to some of them long enough, you're going to start finding yourself depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're going to want to go to the bar. And, you yeah. know, and so, you know, you just, it, it sounds funny, but it's all in all, it, there's actually a lot of accuracy behind it. And, and so uh, community, patience, and renew our minds. But yeah. uh, community, that's top on the list. For sure. And so there's two points I wanted to actually chat to you about there. So firstly, on the, um, you know, what the people we surround ourselves with and the media we consume, right? Uh, the media we consume is so important that we so underestimate its power, right? And especially with social media today, where you're exposed to so much variety that you just accept the bad stuff as part of it, right? But you don't really pay attention to how it's impacting you, right? I think about it in terms of like a mental diet, right? Is is one analogy to to think about it in terms of how, you know, you can eat healthy food and every now and then you can eat junk food and that's okay, right? But if you're eating junk food all the time, like that's going to have a toll on your body, right? Now you might want it and it might give you that dopamine hit, just like that video that makes you angry. Well, in a different way, um, you know, you kind of like are weirdly engaged and you want to engage with the negativity and the anger and the aggression and that kind of stuff. And okay. Right. Like I understand, like we're all susceptible to that, but if you keep doing that again and again, then that becomes your just normal mode of being right. And it, becomes just stable and that's not really good and you need something a fresh perspective to really shift your view of things and say oh what am i doing right sometimes you need a wake-up call sometimes it just happens sometimes you see something else and you just realize like this needs to stop right um like for me on a personal note like i realized you know tiktok right so tiktok is a strange strange platform i mean they've designed that thing brilliantly right now it's dangerous but brilliant (laughs) from a technical perspective it's very brilliant but like i I used to find myself like starting just like wanting to be like oh let me just do like 10 minutes just see what's up and then like three hours later i was still there and i didn't feel any better but i was like i can't stop scrolling right Cause you're just looking for that dopamine hit again and again and again. And you sift through 20 videos that you're like, this is all garbage. But then you find that one that you're like, that was cool. I want another one like that. And then you keep going, right. And you keep trying. And that's why it works so well. Uh, but in those like 20 videos that you had to watch in between, you get exposed to all kinds of stuff. Right. And uh, I think it's particularly bad for the youth because, you know, I think it's bad for everyone, but it's also bad for the youth because th- their brains are developing still and they're in a more like vulnerable position to particularly extreme ideas of various kinds and mm. so be it. But um, I have a complicated relationship because my podcast business also is very dependent on social media like TikTok, right? And it's like, I can't, I don't tell people not to use it because I'm like, well, I want people to use it responsibly so that they can potentially see like this podcast stuff but also i'm like but it, it has this negative effect and it's it's very hard to reconcile those two worlds given that social media is not going away and that i have a business that operates through social media primarily so i have to use it but also knowing that it's got all these like downsides to it right i'm sure you've come across the same sort of thing absolutely Absolutely. And, and and that's, that is the struggle with anything. It, it's yeah. really just finding that happy medium, that balance between the two. And I really believe we spend our whole lives 
no matter what area it is. And particularly, I mean, I've struggled with my weight and, and, and so let this like with you, what you sharing, you know, well, it's okay to eat food, but you know, uh, understand when to stop. And, and so it's, we're always in that constant cycle and, and, it, and we have to be extremely careful, mm -hmm. but that is also why I believe community is important as well. It's like, we have people that can call us out if they see a problem, you know, we want people that love us enough to call us out on it. And I think we live in a world where sadly, uh, there's many people that say, well, if you disagree with me or you call me out on something, you don't love me. Uh, you know, quite the contrary, it, it, you know, depending on the person's heart and, and where they're coming from. But, you know, oftentimes lo love, it, it, it's, it, it's like a no different than the parent. It, you know, if you love your child, you're going to discipline them because you love them and you want what's best for them. And, and no different for, you know, each other. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we are to love our neighbor, but at the same time, love them enough to say, hey, you know, listen, you may want to you may want to cut back on this or watch yourself in this particular area because it's going to take a toll on you and those around you. Um, so, um, yeah. But they have to be ready to hear it, right? And that's the hard Absolutely. part. That is the hard part. And, and is, and so, and, and, and then we can really dive in deep too, because a lot of people have built up walls and they've been hurt. Somebody has told them something or said something to them. And then, then they feel like they need to prove themselves to people. And it takes, <laughs> and we go down this huge psychological, which I've went down those routes with different individuals. And, yeah, um, you know, what is pride? Well, the root of pride is insecurity. And, and you can just dive in really deep. But yes, the person has to be open to it. But the person also has to understand. They have to have that aha moment. And it's really a matter of just maturity uh, and really just growing and, and understanding what, true love is if you yeah. know and being willing to reflect on yourself and accept that you're flawed and that other people might have your best interests in mind and tell you things that you don't want to hear but are true right yeah. and generally speaking you know it's true when they tell it to you you might react defensively and you know maybe you have some control over that maybe not depends on the person and the situation uh, but if you know it's true then it hits you right mm -hmm. and then it's your responsibility to look in the mirror and say, what do I do about this? Do I ask them for help? Do I do it myself? There's all sorts of things that can be done depending on the situation, right? But it's a matter of being able to say, I know I have a problem with this, right? And now other people are seeing it too. And so how serious is it? We need to really look at the problem, right? Like really try to understand it. And this is actually one of the themes that you talk about in your book is like facing your pain and understanding. Did you say understanding the scar or the wound or something? Yeah. Um, but that's a really difficult thing to do because to face pain is to feel pain, mm -hmm. right? But it's the lesser of two bad decisions. Uh, or it's the lesser of two tough decisions, rather. It's not bad decisions. It's tough because to ignore it doesn't mean it goes away. And sometimes it just gets worse, especially for psychological stuff, but probably for everything. And to face it is incredibly difficult. And maybe you can't do it alone, and that's okay. And maybe you need someone else to do it, to be there with you, or a group of people, the community, right? But to do so is to accept reality and then see what you can do about it, right? That's the facing your pain. It's like yeah. if you have a, if you have some, you know, if you break your arm and you decide, I don't want to go see the doctor because the doctor's going to do surgery and that's going to hurt and that's going to suck. And you're like, okay, <laughs> it's a weird choice to make, but you can do what you like, right? But then your arm's going to heal like all funny and, um, you know, you might have permanent like nerve damage or like who knows what's going to happen, right? But because you didn't want to face the reality and actually face the pain and potentially go through more pain first to fix it, then you're going to be in trouble. You're selling yourself short. And I think it's the same thing psychologically, right? Is we often just try and just put things away and we say, I don't want to deal with this. It's too hard. It's too emotionally draining. It's too tough for me. 
uh, maybe it, it traces back to these childhood wounds that are so raw that, you know, they seem unbearable, right? And that's what like therapy and stuff is great for. But to do that is really to free yourself, right? Yeah, no doubt. And, and that's, and that's really the essence of why I titled the book Scar Release, uh, Breaking Free of Yesterday's Troubles. And, mm -hmm. and it really is, it's getting to the root of the problem. And I always use the illustration of my hands and, you know, also coming from a background of juggling and entertaining people, you know, it was so important that I would regain the mobility of my hands. And so for those that are listening or watching, you know, my hands, they were severely burned and they were actually fourth degree. And now a lot of people don't know, because I didn't know in the beginning, what was a fourth degree burn. And what that is, it burns through all of your fat cells down to bone and muscle. And in some cases it requires amputation. They actually wanted to amputate three of my fingers and my family was there. They were great advocates. And they said, no, do whatever you can to save his fingers. He juggles. You could only imagine the surgeon's face, uh, but they were able to save them, but they don't, they, they don't move fully like they once did, but mm -hmm. I can move and function and I make the most of what I can do. However, uh, you know, I have been able to reteach myself how to juggle. I can juggle. Uh, I've juggled six props um, since the wreck. I used to do seven. Um, I used to do eight hoops. Um, yeah, eight hoops. That's what I did. I, I forget. I did seven balls. I did eight hoops and I did five clubs. And, um, you know, I'm able to do five clubs. I can do pretty well everything I used to except for some things. But I remember going in and out of rehab and the therapist was working with me on my hands and my web spaces had contracted to the point that I couldn't even hold on to a bottle of water. Uh, let me rewind for a quick second. So as a burn survivor, obviously you get skin grafts, those skin grafts produce contracture scars. Mm -hmm. And when a contracture scar occurs over the top of a joint, it can limit the mobility of that joint. And so I go in and I couldn't even hold on to a bottle of water. I mean, I'm just flat out limited. So I have to go in and have surgery. They begin to assess me and they say, all right, we're going to need to do a scar release procedure. Uh, and that's where they go in and they cut the scar at its root and it frees you up. But a scar release procedure does not remove the appearance of a scar. It allows the mobility to move with the scar. And that's really where I love taking it in flipping it from the physical to the emotional side of things. Many people scarred throughout their lives, different joints have been affected. Maybe that's in marriage. Maybe that is just in relationships in general. Maybe they have trust issues because of what somebody else did to them. Um, maybe that's in business. I mean, the list goes on. There's different joints. And if we don't address those areas, we find ourselves limited and oftentimes we can't fully function in those mm -hmm. areas because we're still battling with problems and we don't want to take the time to work on ourselves. We would just rather self-medicate and find a happy, quick dopamine fix. Somebody says they love me. Oh, that's great. But the next time somebody says something against us, then we're out, we're running away because, you know, we're, we still got issues from, you know, Bob over here <laughs> triggers that old wound. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, get to the root of the problem, mm -hmm. break free. And then once you find freedom, understand that scars, they are there, but it's all a matter of not allowing that scar to keep you limited and throughout your everyday life, move and function with the scars, your story, for lack of better terms, share your story with others to help others in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so, but still you can break free of that, move forward, find true inner healing and say, all right, here's the lessons I learned and here's how you can apply them to your life. Yeah. And you're a real proponent of the use your story to help other people. I mean, you're the embodiment of it, but you also advocate for people to do the same thing. Absolutely. Right? Now, I, I want to actually just go back a moment. You know, we, you mentioned briefly that a lot of people ask you about whether you forgive the driver that hit you, right? And it's such an interesting um, question 
because you said that forgiveness was for me, not for him. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that that's such a powerful statement to make where it's often thought of like needing to forgive other people as if they need your forgiveness, which Mm -hmm. they might, but also you need your forgiveness for yourself. Right. Right. And this actually comes up a lot in, you know, um, like mutual aid societies like AA or NA or things like that. So during the 12 step program, one of the steps is, um, you know, you have to make amends with people. And oftentimes, you know, they, they say that if you're on the other end, so someone's apologizing to you for something, even if it wasn't a big deal to you, right? Don't like dismiss them because you have to let them do this because this is for them, right? Yeah. Let them make peace with what they've done with you, right? And that's how that's part of their journey. It's not for you, uh, right? You might you might benefit from it as well, but it's not your healing journey that's happening right now. It's theirs. And when I learned about that, um, that really just resonated so strongly with me in the sense of like, forgiveness is about freeing yourself from the chains of bitterness and of resentment right because that resentment will kill you um and you know maybe could you how was that journey for you like how did you reach that point because presumably you didn't wake up and you were like it's fine i forgive the guy um you know (laughs) all good yeah yeah well and it it really was i mean it, it it was a process it didn't happen overnight and my family also had their side of the story mm-hmm. too. so not only was it challenging for me to want to forgive but also for my family those that were affected because of what happened to me and it, it took time and i i also will go back to my faith um you know i respect uh, you know i i respect all people we all have different beliefs, and I speak to a lot of different groups. But for me, being a Christian, um, I also understand that if I want to be forgiven, I have to forgive others, mm-hmm. and 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 so it's there's also that side of things internally with me. It's like, well, <laughs> Lord knows I have done wrong in my life. I'm not a perfect man by any means, um, and, and you know, and I've had my moments where I've upset somebody else or offended and the list goes on we all have so we kind of think to ourselves all right well how would i want to be treated in a situation like this would i want somebody to hold a grudge you know over from me like for the rest of their life no certainly not i want them to find freedom Mm -hmm. And, and so but for me it was really just also too getting a better understanding that forgiveness is for myself it doesn't mean i condone the actions of the individual that hurt me. It just means I am choosing to not allow what happened yesterday to keep me limited from the blessings of today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move forward with my life despite what has happened to me in the past. Life is short and I want to make the most of the time that I have. I'm not going to let this one person because of what they did rule and control my life. No, I'm breaking free of that because I'm going to live my best life, even though I have scars and I've went through what I went through, I'm going to make the most of it. And I really think that's what we all have to do at the end of the day, make the most of our lives despite the past. Yeah. Did you ever find out what happened to that person? I, I did. So the, the individual that was driving, he, uh, he was not injured uh, to my knowledge and he walked away from that. Um, but supposedly, I guess the sheriff's department, they had told me that they believed he was on his phone Mm. prior to hitting me. And so, um, that's about as much as I know on that end. Sure. That's, I mean, if there's an ad for don't text and drive (laughs) right there, it is folks. Yeah. My goodness. Um, It's, it's crazy. And you know, I don't know what his story is or what he lives with in terms of guilt, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that he didn't just go, Oh, well, um, either. And, and like you say, you know, we're all human and, um, yeah, you, you have to move past the tragedy of yesterday in order to live through the blessings of today. And if you can't, then you won't see it, right? If you're so caught up in resentment and anger, which, for a time period is fair, 
right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a natural part of the process of grieving and, you know, many other uh, interactions like that. Like, it's okay. Like no one's saying that you should never feel angry or resentful or judgmental. Like, no, you don't really get to control your feelings like that. But at some point you do get to start to make choices about it and you get to then decide how you want to respond when you start to feel those things, whether you want to allow them to overcome you and ruin your day and week and year, or whether you want to just allow them to be and then let them go away and then you carry on with your life, right? Or you make a new choice and you start reinforcing that belief of yeah. I'm over it, you know, um, it's okay, or it was meant to happen or whatever works for you, whatever belief system you got going for you. Um, I think faith is a good one. It always helps, helps me. Um, I don't exactly know how to define my faith, but you know, it's around in, in some regard. Um, but it, it is, it's just that idea that like, it's, it's meant to be right. And, and lots of people really don't like that saying, um, when you say that, you know, things happen for a reason, especially after tragedies. And I, and I understand why, and it's never meant to take away from the pain of it. Right. And I don't have good explanations for why I have that feeling of that being true for me. Right. And I don't tell people that to make them feel better. Like, I don't think it's usually <laughs> very helpful, but just in making meaning in my life, that's how I, I make sense of a lot of things, but there's still choice, right. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of that's how we live our life with free choice. That's how we experience it. And so you do have to choose and you make choices and you live with consequences of those choices. Uh, but there's a lot more that seems to be underlying all of that. Yes, no, absolutely. Uh, I, and I will say, you know, one of the biggest things for me uh, with a faith perspective, there's a thing in the Christian world they would call apologetics. And um, it's really just breaking down and giving reason as to why we believe the way we believe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't believe we have all the answers to life um, on this side of heaven, but there is a lot we can give reason and insight with. And so it really helped me grow and learn during that time. But all in all, it, ro it really does boil down to that choice. And, you know, me personally, I don't believe God did this to me. I believe he allows things to happen because we do have free will. We have choices. We, we can come and go as we please uh, to a certain degree. And, uh, but I, I love this powerful quote. I don't believe God did it to me, but he allowed it to ha me, happen to me because he could trust me with the scars. Mm. And so I believe I've been entrusted with a story, a message to give to many people around the world. And another uh, powerful way of looking at life's problems is look at it as this is happening for me and not to me. Yeah. And so it's happening for my benefit. I'm going to grow and learn something out of this. And, and, and that's really, and it's hard. It's hard in the moment. But once you get to that aha moment, it's like, you know what? this is not going to be a waste of time. I'm going to utilize this to help me be better, to grow, learn, and something I can also share with somebody else. Do you get a lot of pushback for that kind of stuff? Like when you talk about um, your faith and, you know, God's plan and free will and stuff like that, oh, do you get a lot of people? I, you know? I do. Uh, I do. I, you know, but, and that's, that's another thing too, is in those environments, depending on the context of where it's being shared. Cause I, when I go speak at places, I oftentimes won't share on those things, especially if it's a corporate group or a college. Uh, but there are some settings where I have the liberty of kind of sharing because it's a natural part of my story. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have had some interesting uh, conversations with atheists and people of different belief systems and, you know, and it's, it's all, and you have to go at it with a loving mindset because everybody can reason to certain degrees. Uh, but for me, um, it, it's just been one of those things where I have grown so much as a result of what I went through. 
It's like, you know, I, I'll listen to people, but I think that's another thing too. We all have to be uh, kind enough to let everybody have their words, but at the end of the day, we make the choice. And so for me, obviously there's pushback. Everybody's going to have disagreements. Um, but from what I have seen, uh, for me personally, it's just something that makes the most sense. Yeah. And I think that one way to look at it is like, that's how I or you or this person, that's how they see things, right? Yeah. That's their world, right? And so maybe your statements or my statements don't uh, fit in or match their reality, right? So when you say, uh, God didn't do this to me, he allowed it to happen, that doesn't work for them, right? And some people go way over the top and get all upset about it and you know, they have tried to make all these arguments and whatever. And it's not that there's no validity to them. It's like, is this a helpful discussion, right? Because what you're saying is, this is a statement that helped me through one of the darkest periods of my life, right? I'm not saying it's true for you. You don't have to believe it. You're, I'm just saying this is what I believe, right? You can take what you want from this message, but people don't see it that way. They sort of see it like you're trying to tell them what to believe <laughs> yeah um and i guess that's because some people do do that right some people are uh trying to make people believe stuff but that works both ways right there's it's not more on one side i don't think than the other it's like you'll have atheists pushing atheism and you'll have um you know non-atheists pushing non-atheism i don't know how to collectively group religion and spirituality into like one <laughs> term is quite hard but uh that's just how it goes and it will it's not even just about that it's about everything it's about politics it's about law it's about whatever right yeah. football like there's all sorts <laughs> of stuff like this is the best team like you have to support this team or whatever whatever right it's just let people have their world and have fun engaging conversations and share ideas and have arguments and that's all well and good right that's how we all learn and grow but it, yeah. it it's silly to sort of like attack it in terms of like a in trying to invalidate you know yeah. other people's belief um yeah, to me at least it's it's a largely unhelpful exercise oh absolutely uh and, and that's another thing is like you know people try to pick debates on social media and things well let's let's not do all that yeah. uh, let's talk to the person individually but i think a lot of it too is g what helps in those particular situations is yeah knowing that you can't change people uh we and i think that's something that will bring a lot of peace to people's lives i can't change people i can go up there and i can speak to thousands of people i can do all these things i can write a book but at the end of the day i can't change a person only they can do it and so you know we can only influence change i mm -hmm. guess is probably the most appropriate way of saying it I can share with you some of the knowledge that I have learned, but at the end of the day, you are your own person. You're going to make your decision and be at peace with that. And I think that's, that would uh, help our world a lot. <laughs> if people just got to that point, it's like, Hey, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not telling you to go, you know, you, you live your life, but I'm just telling you from my perspective, this is the way I see this situation. At the end of the day, you make your choice. Yeah. That, that's so true. And uh, I think that's a, a great place for us to finish is to let people make their own choices. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. Do you have any sort of like final messages that you'd like to share? Um, and then I'll promote your book as much as I can. Yeah, I just, you know, no matter what situation you find yourself at um, in, in life, whoever you are that's listening to this or watching this, um, I just hope that it encouraged you. And, you know, I... You know, like, like I was sharing earlier, you know, I, I don't know everybody's story. We all have our own stories and we all have our own filters in which we see life through. And, uh, but I know for me, this has been something that I have grown in and matured a lot. And, and I still don't have all the answers. Um, I'm still growing and learning every day is as a gift and every day is a learning experience. And so, but from this particular tragedy that I encountered, I really believe that the information and things that I have 
learn through it. I, I just, I believe it would be a benefit to you. And so I, I hope that if you have the opportunity, uh, please feel free to check out the book. Also, uh, you know, online Google, you can find out more about me, my website, codyburns.com, C-O-D-Y-B-Y-R-N-S. Um, and even if you want to ask me a personal question, uh, feel free to email me, info at codyburns.com. Um, you know, my big thing at the end of the day is I look to serve and help others, give hope to others. I also have a 501c3 nonprofit where we help other burn survivors. And so I am very much passionate about helping others that have gone through uh, similar situations as I, and we're even looking to serve and help others internationally, uh, nice. including South Africa and possibly in El Salvador. So, uh, you know, it's just a big part of my life. You can learn more. And um, it's it's been truly a, a blessing getting to connect with you, Shane. And and I, I just um, hope it was encouraging to all those that listened. Thank you. That was beautiful. And I really do encourage y'all to read the book. Um, what a story and uh, you're such an inspiration and i wish you nothing but luck and blessings for the future and i look forward to connecting wow. with you again sometime soon oh, likewise thank you brother thanks man take care you too